Okay, number 100. We're going to do our 100th live with Spry. I've got Spry right underneath the table here. Spry, come here. She, we are in a new location. I made, I made note of that. Come here. I'm going to get her out from underneath. We got a little bit of a thunderstorm that just rolled through. Sit. Sit. So we're going to do it here because I've got other stuff going on tonight and uh, won't be able to get sneak it in. So I know it's a different, uh, it's a little bit different time. Come here. Sit. But we're going to try to squeeze one in here. Mid-afternoon, we're at our warehouse. Um, I've got Spry and I've got um, Moja with me. I can show you her. Welcome, Chris. Danny's in, 100 with an exclamation point, no doubt about it. Um, so there's Moja. She's going to watch today. Adam is in. Taylor's in. So I'm going to get her set up. Now, one of the things I'm going to do is you guys have seen, if you've been watching along, we've been having a lot of success. Um, she's been doing a real nice job. Sit. So I'm going to mix it up a little bit today. Uh, uh. So she's kind of getting excited, and again, she's going to have to settle in before we do anything. Um, but one of the things, and you can hear we got the pup in the background. She's wagging her tail pretty hard. So I've woken them up off uh, out of a nap and uh, watching from the bean field. Are we picking beans, Chris? Chris, or are we watching deer and beans? Um, Chris Hines is in. Chris Borgman is is in. So I'm going to make her settle in to this. No different than I do any any other time. A um, couple things I've changed here. Obviously, the location is different. It's the first time we're going to do it here. Um, she's never been on this table before. It's probably something that um, will create a little bit of a distraction. The other thing is, is I'm going to go without a tether. I'm not going to tie her off. Um, so last night we prepped for this. Um, we had her off of the tether, and so she's going to do that tonight, today. Um, different time of day. We've been real evening. Hey, Dan. Dan is in. Jeff Trudell got in. Um, we've been very much so um, doing these things in the evening. It's gotten a little bit later every night, but it's always been after the rest of the day is done. So it's kind of how she's ended her day. This is a big change. Um, so we're gonna we're mixing up quite a few things, but what I said in, in the when I typed it out number one hundred, same same uh, new place, new time, same routine. So I'm gonna do something very similar to what I have been doing. Um, I'm going to, I, but I am gonna start out without the tether. So I talked about last night. I talked about possibly moving her feet. I'm not gonna do that. That's too much. Um, so Ben Ben Borrell, welcome Ben. Um, I'm not going to move her feet. I'll save that for when we go back to the place that she's comfortable with, and we'll get her to move around a little bit on that freezer. Um, so if you've got questions, um, fire away. It looks like I, Hunter just said. I'm going to read that after, Hunter, and I'll come back to your question. I think you got a question there. Chris says he's scouting beans. Unfortunately, scouting beans? Unfortunately, not deer. Oh, he's looking for bugs. I see. Uh, so Nick is in. So I'm going to start out. She has, she, by me talking with you guys and giving this time, she settled in pretty nice. Now I come over by her and she gets a little bit antsy again. So this is that scale of, is she under control? Is she out of control? Is she under control? Is she out of control? And, and as she settles, I'll give her what she wants to do. She wants to do the next thing. She wants to keep moving. And I'm going to dictate the pace and the cadence and the timing that goes on with this training. So she's just gonna have to wait for me until I'm ready. Boy, I hope you can see it in her eyes. She really wants to make a guy happy. Good. Same routine as far as how we get this in her mouth, hole. I'm gonna help her a little bit because we're off tether in a new spot. So I'm going to help her understand where she needs to be with her head. Hold. Hold. So this is more back like three, four days ago. Hold. 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 She 
She's real stiff right now. No tail wagging. Hold. Good. I'm going to try to loosen her up a little bit. Good. There you go. Good. Hold. Hold. Good girl. Good girl. Still really stiff. Good girl. Hold. Hold. I'm going to move this a little closer so you can see her. Hold. Hold. I'd like to get the tail to wag. Hold. Good. Head comes down a little, I get it back up. Hold. That's just a reminder of where you should be right now. Where's your head got to be? Hold. Hold. Good. Hold. Beautiful position right now. Hold. Good. Hold. Nice long repetition here to start out with too, probably pushing it. Hold. Hold. Very nice. Good girl. Hold. 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 Good girl. Dead. That's it. So that was a nice one. Um, sit down. Go right back to sit. Now, you saw her kind of open her mouth twice. That was a really nice pass for her. Um, if that were a test, she passed. I had to remind it with the with the tone. I'd like to see her loosen up a little bit and kind of enjoy this. Hold, hold, and I'll know that by her body language. Right now she's real stiff and I think that's because it's a new spot. A little uncomfortable. Hold, get it up, hold, hold, good girl. Good girl. Really want you to be able to read this body language. Hold. Hold. Watch your eyes. Watch for real subtle changes. Hold. Very good. Look at her nose. Look at her nose going up as I say hold. 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 Very nice. It keeps going up. Good. Good. Hold. Hold. Good girl. Hold. Very good. Very good. Hold. 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 That was uncomfortable. She wanted to get out of it. Hold. Good. Good girl. Hold. Hold. Good. Dead. Very nice. Good girl. Let her reset herself a little bit. Good girl. Sit. So I'm gonna leave it. I'm gonna leave it up closer to her because I really want you to see. I really want you to see that the subtle, subtle changes of reading her body language. And I'm really not there yet with her because she hasn't. I haven't gotten that comfort look out of her yet. She's still pretty stiff. Now she's kind of loosening up a little bit now. Ah, 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 no. I don't want her to get out of control, but I also don't want her to be a, a statue either. Good. Good. Very good. I might change my tone a little bit and get her a little excited. Good girl. Good girl. Good girl. Good girl. There, a little tail wave. Good girl. Sit. Good girl. I'm real happy because we're not tethered off and she's really in a nice position for a new spot. Hold. There's a puppy right down at her feet and she's not that distracted. Hold. 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 Good girl. Hold. Hold. Very good. Good girl. Hold. Hold. It's a little offset. Hold. Hold. There it centers up nice. Hold. 
fold. Good. Good. Hold. Hold. See how she ducked out of that? I walked away. Hold. Hold. I got the pup on the ground and she's chewing on gravel, so I went over there and hold. Nice little mistake to be corrected, though. She'll learn from that. Hold. It's a nice long repetition. Hold. Good girl. Now I'm going to test her because I'm going to come in and I want to make sure she holds and I'll remind her with tone. It's going to look like I'm taking it. Hold. Hold. Good. Hold. Good. Hold. Good girl. Dead. Very good. Very good. Very good. I'm gonna move this back a second. We're gonna get one more in out of it. Those are nice long, relatively long repetitions. I thought they went pretty well. Where Christine got in, I'm here. Wow, you're early today. I am early. I had to get it done here tonight. I think it was gonna get too late. So how do you correct how do you correct any mouthing? Andy, what do you mean by mouthing? Do you mean chomping? Um, someone asked yesterday, I don't think it was you, Andy, someone asked us about it yesterday. I recommend, so it's hard to show a lot of stuff with fixing um, with Spry because she's just not making a lot of mistakes. That's it. Um, I do recommend going back on our YouTube page and looking at Ellie and Kimber, their sisters. I hold conditioned them together live for probably about 14 days. Um, just got them off the ground and got them moving around. But one of those dogs, was chompy. Uh, Kimber was chompy. And so you can see on this dowel, I've had chompy dogs over the years. That's why I'm using a wooden dowel too. Because I don't want to form a habit of chomping on bumpers. Um, so, come on. Sit. 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 So, the idea is to get through that before we put into bumpers. So the way I would fix it, the, one of the ways I would fix it, and you watch those videos because you'll see me doing it, having to do it live, is I don't get to the point where I, I'm, I'm right here with them and they want to roll it in their mouth and roll it in their mouth, and I'm right here. It's hard for them to do that. So I'm doing this until they stop doing it, and as soon as they stop doing it, I let my hand down. Now she's really riding my hand right now. So I slowly take it away, and then if they get to the chomping, I, at times I would put two hands on to stop the chomping. But that's something that can take a while. That's why this process might, you're not going to, if you got a dog that's chomping and rolling and putting it back and it's putting his back or their head back and kind of rolling it in their mouth, you're not going to move on until they, you get that, until that stops. So, um, by manipulating what they're able to do and then letting them understand that's good. When they chomp, no, that's not good. Just like when they drop, no, that's not good. When you're holding good, hold, good. So it's connecting the, the reward or the praise or, and or the correction at the right time. So you, you firm that up and they can't roll it on you. Hold. You can hear the little gravel eater in the background here. Hold. 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 As soon as I walk away, she's lowering. That tells me we're not ready to go to the ground. Not a chance. We're going to get to where I can walk away 
and she's going to be holding and nothing goes down like this, down like this. Because if she's down on the ground and she goes down like this, I can't get there that quickly to correct if we have an issue. So I'm not going to get too far along to have an issue. So that's an indicator to me she's not ready to go to the ground. Every time I walk away, she goes down. Hold. Hold. Now I'll move her. Tomorrow probably I'll move her. When I say move her, I'll get her feet to move with that bumper in. And my goal is to have her move and come right up. Move and come right up. Move and come right up. That'll be the next incremental step. And then I'll put her to the ground probably after that. But not if she continues to keep that head and drop it every time I move away from her. If her head drops, we're gonna run into trouble trouble and problems as soon as we hit the ground. So we gotta fix that first. Hold, hold. She's real good when I'm right here watching. But there's a lot of dogs that are real good on place when you're sitting right there watching them. But as soon as you leave the room, they decide to take the liberty of getting off place. Well, that's what she's doing. She's taking the liberty of, he's away from me, I'm gonna maybe put my head down. No, I gotta get that fixed. Hold. So we'll have that fixed before I ever go to the ground. That might take a day or two. Hold. Hold. Very nice. Hold. See, as I come in and she thinks I'm going to take it from her, I'm testing her as to whether hold means hold or my actions mean I'm going to spit a bumper. Hold. So if I come in, I'll remind her, hold. 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 Dead. Very nice. So there's the differences for her. That's got to be the key. That's got to be what, what allows for her to open that mouth and release it. So let me go back. I've got a couple questions. Ethan Pippet joined in. Andy Sessions is in, uh, Andy Sessions was the, the question about mouthing. So, yeah, try that, Andy. And I would recommend going back um, into our YouTube page and watching that live that we, those lot, that series of lives that we did. Um, with Kimber and Ellie. So now, lesson's done. That doesn't mean we just get loose. Sit down. So this is how we talked about last night, how we ended it with, um, you know, we ended our session with, she just sat there and waited. It took a while. So uh, there was a couple questions um, I'm going to scroll back to. One of them was early. When you were doing that hold video, a couple of videos back, where you had them hold the piece of wood, it looked like. Is that just so you pick up a bird or antler, they keep it until they... Is that just so when they pick up a bird or antler, they keep it until they get to you? Yeah, delivery, Hunter. We call it a nice delivery, solid delivery. Um, no dropping, no spitting, no switching. If you're, if you're training as a gun dog or bird dog and you've got multiple birds that are down, we don't want dogs that will... Um, be in the middle of a retrieve and all of a sudden a bird sets in and we shoot another one and they drop it and they go get that one because that one's newer. Um, that's switching. We, this eliminates a dog that will switch on you. Um, so we do it for a lot of reasons. I use the wooden dowel because we just touched on it. If your dog is chomping and biting, I don't want to form that habit with a bird. I don't want to form it with a bumper. I don't want to form it with something that they're ultimately going to be retrieving. So I want to eliminate the habit, but don't even let it start with the right with that object. So I'm using that wooden dowel because that wooden dowel, I'm never going to train my dogs to retrieve sticks for me in the wild. So I don't care if this, when, when this starts out, the other reason we use it is when this starts out, a lot of times we're almost wrestling with them to get it in there. You watch some of the old videos that I did with um, Dan. I, did I didn't do live. I filmed it. I filmed hold conditioning with a dog named Dan uh, a while back. Jet is a dog that I did, uh, just recorded it. We didn't have live back then. Kimber Ellie, we've done live. Um, so we look at some of the ones that we did at some of the workshops. We filmed several lives where we did uh, hold conditioning. And some of it is we're wrestling in the bumper into the dog's mouth or the dowel into the dog's mouth. And I don't want to associate that with a bumper. So if, we, if it gets a little hairy when you first get started, that's why we're using that wooden dowel because I don't care if they have a, a, an association with a wooden dowel. I never teach a dog to hunt wooden dowels. So that's the reason why we started out with. Uh, Steven from the north was in, and yes, we were early. How do you correct the mouthing? We talked about that. Off topic a little, but can you explain a little, re can you explain a little why you told me last night to stop retrieving with Thor? Do I stop until he's neutered and then back up 
and do hold conditioning at the same time. Still going to give it a go in the water, but was just thinking through your advice after you signed off. No, I, I'm not saying, I'm saying stop retrieving with objects that he's not retrieving well. So I think you had made mention that if you use a bumper, he wants to play with it or chew on it. Won't pick it up and bring it back to you. So my, my suggestion is stop doing that because that's forming a habit. And it's the wrong habit and it's with the wrong object. So you had mentioned that he retrieves the tennis ball pretty well. I don't have a problem with you retrieving with the tennis ball. What I want to do is what are we gaining? Like the, the question is, is what are we gaining, Jeff, with our training? So if he's retrieving the tennis ball well, that's good. We're getting a little bit of retrieve out of it. But are they productive retrieves? Because I only do about three or four retrieves with a young dog, tops. And your dog's pretty young. So if I get three or four out of them, stop, be done. The re and work on some of the denials and the steadiness and build, throw 50 and retrieve three. That'll build a real nice steady dog that loves to retrieve. But what I don't want to do is I don't want to consistently form a bad habit, which is what you're struggling with, with certain objects. So I don't want to do 100 tennis ball retrieves because I think what you're going to risk with that is burning a dog out. I had another guy that, I've got a guy that I have to respond to. He sent me a, a message. His dog was retrieving really well. It's nine months old was retrieving really well and just recently it has lost all interest in retrieving at nine months old and he said should i hold condition i said well eventually but i won't start it right now this is what i'm going to tell email him back because i asked another question to him i said well, how often do you retrieve he said i retrieve twice a day um, i do about two lessons every day and i retrieve quite a bit in both of those lessons that's way too much so i think he's turned the dog i think the dog's bored with it now all of a sudden you got a dog who's forming a habit of stopping retrieving i don't want that so we got to keep in mind why are we making retrieves they should be to take steps forward in training and i call them when you just retrieve 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 i call that meaningless retrieves you're not gaining anything from them you're running the risk of of maybe burning out too um so andy said that's helpful so i, I would give that a shot uh, Charlie got in, Ethan got in, Mike got in, Marty got in, John, Jordan got in. Not a bad little group for this afternoon. Um, Trudell says he's got it. Yeah, and the reason I said to go to the water is because it's very difficult for a dog to run off in the water. So it's very difficult for a dog to just play with something in the water. You get a bumper in the water, camp, you know, one of these, one of these fire hose style bumpers, that is my preferred bumper. We sell them. You know, the dog bone, they've got dog bone on them. They're made by a company that makes bumpers. So I like that style. And in the water, the dog won't play with it. See what we got here? This is, this is where the, oh, we're getting value out of our lesson. We went from little antsy, got some nice hold conditioning, and now we're finishing off with steadiness. So we're going to round, round this thing out. Um, but the the bumpers in the water, they can't play with them. They're swimming. So they put them in their mouths and they bring them back to us. They don't run off. We, we get straight out and straight back. I don't know any dogs that run victory laps in the water. So we're able to kind of minimize some of those negative opportunities. So I got a lot out of spry 4th of July weekend. That was, what, that was what pushed us forward in our ability to start retrieving. And you can remember, she was already seven months old, something like that. So that was what helped us get started. Okay, I have a five-month-old chocolate. Have, haven't have started him doing anything yet. Would my, would my best bet be get your videos? Main goal, duck and goose, but shed and blood tracking to keep him busy. Your thoughts. Um, I am big on training to do more than one thing. I think it makes them better at everything. So the easy answer to that duck and goose is going to create, need a dog that's got good natural retrieve um, or, or will make retrieves. You're going to have to work a little bit of marking in at some point. I don't worry about marking until a lot later down the road. We're not worried about it with, um, we're just starting to worry about it with Ellie. She's two. Um, their ability to naturally mark will get you through the majority of that early stuff. So uh, steadiness is going to be really important for your goal as a duck dog and a goose dog. Retrieve is going to be important. Um, patience, quiet, being quiet, 
Um, all of that stuff is going to be necessary. In order to do the drills that I think you need to do to develop a good gun dog or a duck dog, um, or, an, or even an upland dog, or a shed dog, or a blood dog, whatever it is you're doing, that there's all nose work involved with all that, so there's over, overlaying skill sets there. But I think you have to have a foundation. And that means heal, sit, stay, and come when I call you. Those, are the, to me, are the most important things. And if you can do those things, you can train them to do any type of hunting. So I would say, so your question was, my best bet to get your videos. I think that will help you greatly. I think the foundation DVD is by far the most valuable of all of them. If you want to train a shed dog, the most valuable piece of information I can give you is our foundation DVD. I'm going to say it's more important than the shed DVD. Because without it, you can't do the shed DVD. That's why we did that second DVD, and it was in reverse order. We did shed and game recovery first, and then we did foundation. And the reason was because people weren't able to get to the good stuff because they didn't have the foundation. So I do think that that would be my number one recommendation. Um, as far as the specifics when it comes to tracking, that game recovery DVD, it's going to give you a lot of information. The game recovery kit has a booklet that is the same thing. It's just I talk better than I write. So I think the DVDs are better than the books. That, I wrote the books that go with them. So Shed and uh, Game Recovery. So the kits and the DVDs have a lot of good stuff for them. Um, but I think Foundation first, Steve. I really I really do. Uh, Curtis Carlson. Elena was in. Jeffrey. John Ballard. Jay Roberts. Do you force fetch or just do hold conditioning? What's the difference? I do not force fetch. I don't believe in connecting negatives to things that my dogs like to do and do naturally. So hold conditioning allows me to get the exact same result. I think it gives me the exact same result. I don't know exactly. I, I don't force fetch, so I don't speak a lot about force fetch. I know enough about it that I don't like it. So I ask people, why do you force fetch? And they tell me it's because we've always done it that way. And to me, that's not a very good answer. Um, so hold conditioning allows me to get a delivery to hand allows me to get a dog to stop switching, allows me to get do these things that, that create some problems if we don't have a dog delivering. Um, force fetch or hold conditioning fixes that without the force. So I don't have to pinch ears. I don't have to pinch toes. I don't have to put collars on. I don't have to do any of that stuff. And I think I can get uh, equal to result specifically on the micro level, but on the macro level, I think I'm way ahead because I have 100% trust in my dog. My dog trusts me, I trust it. So I, I, it's my approach, Andrew. Um, I avoid pressure. Um, I believe you have to have correction and praise in training. I don't believe in um, shocking dogs. I just don't believe in it. Um, I don't think, I think it's a, it's a way to speed things up and there's certain things in life that just can't be sped up. Um, and I think what it does is it creates more problems than it fixes in the big picture. That's my, that's my opinion. Um, so Steve, awesome. Thank you very much. Uh, if anybody else has questions, fire away and I can answer them later. I got to get rolling, but we got our 100th, uh, 100th live with Spry in. So do me a favor again, guys. I had someone, I'm going to post this, uh, I sent them a message back and asked them if they minded I posted it, but someone sent me a message today, um, really nice message, said something about really appreciate you doing the live videos, um, that's the reason why we do them, because that made me, that gave me enough energy to continue to do another hundred, so um, I'm going to post that and I'm going to thank, I want to thank you guys for, for supporting it, um, if you would do me the favor of sharing it. I think that's the best way to grow it. And I think the more involvement, the more interaction we have, the better. Um, that's the value of doing it live as opposed to just filming it. So the other value is things don't always go that well. And so you're not just watching a highlight reel of someone training a dog here. You're watching the ups and the downs, the good, the bad, and the ugly. And I think that's valuable. So you guys have a great day. We'll talk to you soon uh, on to another 100 Live with Surprise. Talk to you soon.